Welcome back to The Fix. It's officially rosé season, and we're here at Del Fishco's Grill, right in the heart of Manhattan, in Rockefeller Center. I know we always take you guys on location, and I am here with the Director of Wine Education. This is Jessica Norris of Del Fishco's Grill. She is the woman. She handles all of the stuff that has to deal with one of the most important components of our meal, Wine. Absolutely. Jessica, thank you so much for coming on the fix today. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun these past couple of weeks. And because it's officially rosé season, today's fix is all about how to make inexpensive rosé taste amazing and different ways to kind of spice it up Absolutely. and really make it fun. Yes. So you're here to talk to us first a little bit about some tips on choosing the right rosé. Because guys, there's a rosé shortage that's coming. We all know it's on the way. <laughs> Okay, but you can still buy some of those inexpensive rosés, you said? Absolutely. So, rosé doesn't have to be expensive to begin with. Uh, if you are, if you're okay losing the usual suspects and thinking outside the box, things from the Loire Valley in France, or Alsace, or Washington State, or Oregon, um, New York State, out on Long Island, there's awesome rosés that are not expensive to begin with that are phenomenal. Okay, and like, give me a price range when you say inexpensive, because people are watching all over the country. I'd say 8 to 15 Okay, so fifteen dollars, guys. Easy That's not bad at all. Yeah, one, two, three. Okay. Um, Charles and Charles Rosé from Washington State is one of them. This is what we serve here by the glass. Okay. Um, this is still one rose. of your, your top rosés. It's, it's our rosé by the glass. Perfect. We liked it so much, and it, it performs so well, and it's not expensive um, that we offer it by the glass. I'm so excited we're here at Del Christmas. Yes. By the way, you guys, because this is one of my family's. <laughs> yes, we're Yay. drinking, which I love to do on a Thursday. It's Thirsty Thursday, but. My family is a huge fan of this restaurant, and you. the wine selection is premier. Thank so you. we're very, Thank very you. happy. We pick wines to pair with our food. Really, honestly, it's supposed to be a food and wine marriage. So um, all of our wines by the glass go with our food, particularly our rosé, tuna tartar tacos. I love it. Oh yes, I love. We're gonna get into the food later. Amen. So let's get into some of the you know inexpensive ways and some ways to spice up your rosé. Yeah. You to you know have a bottle at home. Yep. Or if you weren't going out to a restaurant. What are some of your top tips and tricks? So if you find yourself with a bottle of rosé that maybe is not up to your standards, mm -hmm. um, a couple ways to doctor, add ice. Add um, ice, okay. Add ice is going to make it colder, which is going to kind of just wrap everything up for you. It, it tastes less like rosé, it just tastes colder. Okay. Uh, so cold makes everything taste good. So whites as well, um, you can do either of that to add ice. Will that dilute it a little bit or you don't think it's, it's okay? It will, but I mean, how? drinking your rosé pretty fast, right? right? So, I mean, you don't have to add it in a, in a drink glass. You can add it in a wine glass. Okay. Or we can add spritzer. I love this. So, we did actually, these are, I like the ice cube shapes here yeah. too, because if you're having a party and you're having friends over, you want to spice it up a little right. bit. You don't want to go with your normal ice cube. And these melt slower. One big cube is going to melt slower than a bunch of small cubes. Okay. So, if you do one big cube in your glass of rosé, it's not going to do as fast. So, okay, and we also have the square one. We do. As well, we did a really fun. So we're kind of always pretending that we're top mixologists yeah. and you know, really, fancy. Yeah, very fancy, fancy. Around the fix, but we're just you know doing small, simple things to just spice up your wine glass and your rosé. Indeed. So easiest thing to do is add ice. Okay. You can also add sparkling water. So sparkling water. Pellegrino, Fox, Perrier. Um, rosé is just a spritzer, so you can you can spritz your rosé if it's not doing it for you. You don't have to buy a spritzer, guys. You don't have to go out there and buy some of the products that are out there in the supermarket. You can just make your own. If you have soda water at home and a little bottle, you just dump some in there and you have a spritzer. Perfect. Not hard. Yeah, and call it like a fun date as Amen. well. Yes. You want to make it fun for all of your friends that come over. Yes. Very cool. Talk to me about, you know, we have some questions as well. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Jessica is here with us today. Love and questions. we have one already. Go ahead. Is there a rosé that is low in sugar? Yes. I'm the trying question. to lose weight. Ooh, okay. All right. So, for the guys, all around. when you're Me drinking, too. it's summer bodies. We, you know, we did SLT here on the fix a couple of weeks back. Okay. We're going to get our summer bodies in shape. Yes. But our question was, you know, when you're drinking and you're trying to still maintain and tone your body, are there rosés with a little less Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, when you're at the store picking your rosé, if you look for the alcohol, which is usually on the side of the front of the bottle or the back of the bottle, okay, it'll say a percent. It's required by law. Um, so, if you look at that percent, if it's higher than 10.5 percent, that means the wine is dry. There is there is no perceivable sugar in it, uh, which means that it's going to be probably a little higher in alcohol, but there's not going to be as much sugar. It's not going to be sweet. 
got it. So we like the higher percentages Amen. here on the face. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Great. Um, so you said the number, magic number? Yes. The, the alcohol percentage is on the bottle. Okay. And this one at the very back is 12.2% alcohol, okay. um, which means that it's dry. There's no residual sugar in this bottle. And like that. Yes. So if you're worried about gaining weight, you know, obviously you're drinking to begin with. Like, <laughs> we have a problem. But, no, no, we all love to toast our glasses of rosé and look for that alcohol content. Alcohol percentage on the bottom. Great question. It's your Great sneaky, question. sneaky trick. Great question. I yeah. love it. I love that. One, two, three. Another tip and trick that you kind of came up with us, came up for us today. Yes. It's something I absolutely love. And we're getting into these are actual pops. Popsicles. So how does what is the process of making these? So I mean, you can make a popsicle out of anything. Juice. Obviously, we all make ice cubes in our freezer. Rosé in the freeze. Rosé will freeze. Rosé will freeze. Okay. So whether you want to do some rosé and some fruit, fruit puree uh, and make a popsicle, and then you can put that popsicle in a normal glass of rosé. This is sangria. Uh, uh, so we do a popsicle sangria here at the grill. It love is this. awesome. It is a epitome of summer. Wait, there's a popsicle there's in a popsicle. this glass. Yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh, that's so much fun. Isn't I love it? it. So anyone can, you know, kind of make a play this on the a, Del Frisco's yeah. sangria. This is a do-at-home summer thing. I love this. This is so much fun. You don't need the popsicle in the sangria. You can just go with the sangria, but it's not going to hurt your sangria. You oh, decide to throw a popsicle in. That's either. so quick. So you took the rosé and added some fruit. Fruit puree. Uh, okay. Okay. Strawberry, okay. raspberry. You can change it up. Uh, okay. However you see fit, as according to your likes. Make a little likes. slushy. I yeah. Like yeah. And then sangria is just wine and cut up fruit. Um, so uh, I know that some people serve their sangria with the fruit in there. We don't. Okay. Um, depends on what you like. So it depends, depends on what you like at home. Apples, yeah. pears, lemons, pineapple, mango. You can whatever you want to cut up and throw it in. Throw it all in there. It's gonna make your it's gonna make your rosé taste good. That's so fun. I, I this is great. I love yeah. this drinking. This Isn't really fun? stands out at the summer parties. We have another question for you. Of course. Can you get tipsy off of the rosé popsicles? <laughs> you can get tipsy off of anything. Yeah. <laughs> Our question was, can you get tipsy or tips off of the right. rosé popsicle? I mean, if you eat enough of them. Yeah. I think so. It's like having, you know, a glass of wine. Maybe the popsicle is not a whole glass of wine. Yeah. Be safe. Uber home. Yeah. But, exactly. You know, exactly. You can definitely. I mean, this is alcohol it's in the popsicles. Yeah. yeah. And they're so fun. And all you did was just put. These are just normal popsicle stand yeah. holders. You can do them in, in any size cup, you know, you can make ice cubes or you can make popsicles, it doesn't really matter, you can just freeze them. I love that, yes. I love that, that's so easy. You literally just put these in your chef, yes. Chef Lombardi. Yes, Chef okay. Greg Lombardi. Chef Greg Lombardi popped these in the freezer today, simple, easy, and now we have a rosé popsicle. Rosé popsicle, which is so much fun, so I love this. You can also cool. make ice cubes. I know that we all like the cold pressed juice. Yes. Uh, obviously, probably not a cold pressed juice in the morning before work, but a cold pressed juice in the evening. Yes. You can throw some rose ice cubes in a cold pressed juice. Okay. Uh, and that's great. Yeah, that's really yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I think we, we combining some of the different drinks that you have and making them fun. I love the slushy idea. You know, I love to go to 7 Eleven myself. Yeah. And sometimes you make some Granita. different apples. Amen. I did Granita. Yeah. As an Italian, a granita is a huge dessert. It's sort of a mix of some ice cream or yogurt. Ice cream and yogurt. Yeah. With, um, the, you can do rosé as rosé freezes. You can do it in a, you can do a cheap pan okay. in the freezer. And you yes. do a thin layer of rosé, put it in the freezer. And then when it's sort of almost frozen, like frozen or just not crazy hard frozen. You don't want to leave them there for a couple of days. Okay. Um, but then you drag a fork through it. And it'll make those little ice cubes. I love that. And you can use it as a garnish okay. for yogurt or ice cream. You can throw it in a glass. Um, I have it melt and have it kind of be like a 7 Eleven slushy. Oh my gosh, it's uh, so much fun. Rose I've, style. I've said spun about a million times here because <laughs> we were so fun. excited about this. We were so wine excited style. about this piece in this episode. Talk to me also. So, we have a few things that just to recap for you. We talked about our ice yes. and how important the ice was, you know, to really chill your rosé. Yeah. And what do you, like a temperature, is there a certain thing that you... I mean, the more, the warmer a wine is, the more flavor you're going to get out of it. So if you've got a rosé that's not tasting great, if you chill it, chill it down, you're going to get less flavor, which makes it more consumable if it's not great. Got it. Uh, so chilling anything down is going to kind of remove some of that flavor and make it go down a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, and then we did normal rosé. Yeah. You can buy a good bottle of rosé and not spend a lot of money, or if you don't have a great bottle of rosé, you can make sangria. Yes. Um, sangria, just a normal fun recipe. Normal, normal sangria, you can make popsicles and do what you will with your popsicles or your ice cubes. Very, very nice. Um, or we can granita style it and throw it on top of frozen yogurt. Frozen yogurt. I, mean, that, I kind of want that right Yeah. Now. <laughs> it sounds delicious. <laughs> it's absolutely delicious. 
we're gonna taste test all of these too. Amen. Yeah. So up. don't worry. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about just with Del Briscoe's how you choose some of your wines and how you sort of make a palate. Because yeah. a lot of people they want they go out on you know meetings, they yeah. go out on dates, and they get nervous. You know, they of get course. nervous to order wine. a right bottle of wine. Yeah. yeah. And it's, Complicated. It shouldn't be, and it has a reputation for being snobby, and it also shouldn't be because at the end of the day, wine is fun. Wine is um, fun, and you're okay. supposed to get buzzed, yeah. so that's also fun. Um, so we create our wine list uh, yeah, kind of no. fun, funky, and eclectic, okay. and hopefully not snobbish. Um, we champion women winemakers. We champion winemakers who are doing new things in areas that are not um, the old tried and true areas. Okay. Um, new projects in established areas like California. What's cool that's happening down there? That Get our get our teeth into and present to a consumer. Very nice. Um, and we also food friendly is huge for us. Okay. So on our wine list, we have something for everyone. Whether you're looking for a big, bold, turbo boosted cab, uh, or you're looking for something softer like a Pinot Noir or something super outside the box that you've never had before. That your um, that your servers like I had this every ship and it's awesome with our flatbread. Can I bring you a taste? Oh, it's great. Yeah, that's absolutely great. And that was going into my next question for you. Yeah. Specific to rosé. Yes. What do you suggest pairing with? If someone's going to throw a party at home, yeah, you know, and you want to have your rosé out there. So maybe you're an expensive rosé, maybe you're more yeah. whatever you choose, whatever you choose. Yeah. What do you like to pair it with? So rosé goes with with lots of things. It doesn't go so much with heavy meats. Okay. Um, but in the summertime, you know, we're doing barbecues that are hot dogs and hamburgers, not necessarily steaks and ribs. Um, so you can make a rosé go with steaks and ribs, but it's going to pair a lot better with lighter fare. Okay, so lighter fare for the rosé, guys. This that is, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's lighter wine, lighter lighter food. Mm -hmm. um, oh, flatbread pizza. This is our prosciutto arugula flatbread pizza. Oh, uh, it's amazing. It's awesome. Um, the fresh flavors here are going to go with the fresh flavors in the glass. Mm. There you go. So much fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Yep. Um, also fish. Um, any kind of fish, whether it's going to be shrimp, whether it's going to be oysters, whether it's crab, whether it's tuna. Um, these are our ahi tuna tartar tacos. Really nice. Layer of avocado on the bottom, which mm. is kind of, they're just a fresh, fun way to, um, to enjoy a meal. Got and it. I go with all of the rosés on the table. This is perfect. So we have a flatbread pizza, which would be fun at home. Yep. Fish, very light, very yeah. nice fare. Yep. The tuna tartar tacos. And this is a staple in my house from when I grew up. Okay. My mom made artichokes all the time. Um, and so artichokes are kind of hard to pair with food because they're they're kind of green and they're earthy. Yeah. Uh, and rosé because it's kind of light and it's got a slight mineral edge, but it's not usually complicated wine. Um, is a phenomenal pairing with some of the harder to pair items in food. Like, yeah. yeah. You're teaching me all about like what to pair and what to go with our rosé. Yeah. Artichokes, asparagus. If you guys have any questions for Jessica, please let us know. She is here, here. with us today. So <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I've left rosé sitting by the pool by mistake. Is it still up here to refrigerate and drink later on? Okay, so our question was when you're out in, you know, lounging by the pool with all of your friends and you leave your rosé outside, is that okay to still continue drinking it if you're leaving it out there sitting in the sun? So your wine is not going to go bad in fact that it's going to spoil it off of sick. Uh, it might not taste as great if okay. you leave it by the pool, depending on if it's a full bottle, it will probably be okay. The more oxygen that's touching that wine, um, the faster it's going to change in profile. So if it's almost empty and you leave it by the pool, you might want to take a sip before you go. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, as with anything, if you ice it down, you're going to lose a lot of the flavor. Right. So, heck, you know, yeah. drink it really cold drink and it right. That's a good question. <laughs> you know, the, all the questions are good here on The Fix. We love that you guys are asking. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Anything else that we haven't covered, Jessica, today? Other than some, you know, we have all of our inexpensive ways to really spice up rosé. No, I think we've got it. I think we've got it. Amazing, amazing. Well, all of these will be up on the, our Facebook page, guys. Please tune in, ask your questions, continue to do so. We will answer them. Thank you so much again for tuning into the fix, Jessica. Let's cheers. cheers. I'm going to do my popsicle. So. <laughs> I saw you I the popsicle. This. I popsicle. Oh, see, and it's melting Amen. into the drink. Cheers, cheers and cheers. thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. And guys, please, if you're in the city, visit Del Frisco's. Come by and taste some of their wine because it's unbelievable. And we'll see you on Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Thanks so much.